being with the program as long as I have now and seeing the community of women and the different body types and the struggles that we all have and seeing those transformations physically and emotionally, it's absolutely amazing. That can be you, you can do it. Um, don't be afraid to invest in yourself because I wish I would have invested in myself sooner. So what's up, what's up? Casey Casey Ship here in my car. Hopefully everybody can hear me because normally I would have my microphone. Um, wanted to do a, well, this was a long time. Alicia was supposed to give me a testimony and she didn't, but she's really hot and she's had a great testimony. I'm like, let's just fucking do a, let's just do like a podcast testimony. And she's like, okay. So we met last year, 2020. She was scared actually to reach out, scared to spend money, even though she's got like a lot of money. I'm just, I'm just messing with you, girl. Um, <laughs> crazy testimonial like she is a multi six-figure gal more degrees than a thermometer she's she's i'll let her tell her exact title but she's a really really educated gal even though she looks like some hot girl like trophy wife no she's got the brains okay she works her ass off and she wanted a physical transformation she had been doing all kind of programs and i was like holy shit, yeah let's get this scene about she had some grief stuff she just knew there was some stuff that needed to be cleaned out energetically and physically and finally just crazy results you know she had like problem areas i'll let her tell you about that and then she was terrified to work out at the gym so now a lot of you listening just kind of insecure a little bit scared to start going to the gym and now she's like a little meathead going to the gym and stuff like that so i thought it would be a really cool thing to bring her on let her share kind of what worked for her maybe some fears she had and how she got over it to help our listeners kind of do the same thing so alicia what's up thanks for coming on i know you're busy thank you i'm glad to be here anytime i can help anyone else the way you've helped me i am more than happy to do it so tell it what is your title by the way so I am, I work in nuclear power. I am a senior reactor operator and I work in a predominantly male field. That's right. Yep. I remember that. So you came in initially and I can't remember, was it that you were wanting like, not the hormones? I don't know. What was, I guess, that caused you to like reach out? So I had done, I've tried Lady Boss. I finished um, the Insanity workouts, the beach body. I tried numerous kinds of workouts, but I would do it for two to three months. I would see great results and then I would just burn out. I would come home from work every day and barely had time to get my kids to and from practice without being emotionally and physically exhausted. I knew that there had to be more to how I was feeling. I'm, I'm 37 years old and there's no way I should be completely exhausted after a day at work and not be able to spend time with my husband and kids. So I was concerned about how I was feeling. I have followed you on social media for some time. I admired the way you look, the way you had kids, you're a mom, you're a professional. And I just thought to myself, if she can do it, there's got to be something there that she can help me with. And then when I called initially, you hear the price for something like this and the shock factors like, oh, I can't spend that on me. But I, I thought back all the money and time I've spent on my education over the years and how much I've learned. After I'd spent money on numerous beach body products, numerous lady boss trials, and it didn't teach me anything and didn't get me anywhere. And so I just went into it with a mentality that this is like a college class. This is going to teach me a new lifestyle. And I finished the um, Hot Moms Level Up program probably three months ago now, and I've been able to maintain the same consistency and keep the same energy that I had leaving the program. And I was nervous. It's, is this going to be like insanity? Is this going to be like Beachbody? But no, it has literally been life changing, just like a college course where you have something you can take with you for the rest of your life. That's so cool. I guess the time thing, because I know one thing you said, uh, I was like, how'd you do that? And you said, well, I just, there's some extra dirty clothes. But I remember when you came in, you know, she's got kids in competitive sports and she's busy and she does all this other stuff. So what was it, do you think, that really made a difference in your time management or how were you able to do everything but still have time left over? Because you had more relaxation like me days too. I did. When I started talking to you and you talked about the importance of sleep and don't work out if you don't get sleep, we started talking about prioritization and self-care. We talked a lot about self-care because I always put me last. I read the book Energy Vampires that you recommended. 
and I realized how many people were sucking the life out of me. And I just got to the point where I, someone would want to go out to eat for Mexican food. And I would say, no, I'm going to go take a nap or no, I'm going to go sit in the hot tub. And when I realized how much better I felt by taking a 30 minute bath locked in my bathroom all by myself or taking that 20 minute power nap, I started to realize how much I needed it for so long. And then it was okay. Like if, I, okay, so what if I don't get the laundry done? It's not gonna walk away. It'll pile up a little more, but I'll get to it when I get to it. So much more important to have that self care and that energy that I need for my family. And now my kids and my husband are like, where have you been the last three years? This is amazing to have you back. Cause your daughter's in competitive cheer, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And with that, you ha there's a, I mean, you're, you're having to travel and book rooms and be around all this energy stuff. And I remember she was telling me like, wow, normally I would have done this and this and that. And even though the energy didn't feel great with some of the, some of the, you know, parents or the whatever, you set some really big boundaries with, with that. You set boundaries with your mother-in-law and like travel, like tell us just a snippet without mentioning names or anything like that, just where you were and then the mentality shift around it and why it was so beneficial. Um, one example I had is um, I pulled out to cheer practice and usually the moms want to get out in the parking lot and talk and gossip. And after we had this talk about self-care and energy and just saying no to people, like I legitimately roll my window down. Hi, it's great to see you, but I'm going to take a nap while she's at practice. And I rolled the window up and I lay down and I went through one of the chakra videos and just laid there and meditated, took a nap and zero guilt whatsoever. And it was that moment that it finally, the aha moment, like I can do this. And the girl still talks to me when I see her. She didn't think of me any less because I didn't spend an hour sitting out in the parking lot and gossiping. But I have taken that with me. It's okay to say no. I was the person that always said, yes, yes, we'll go to dinner tonight, even though the kids won't get in bed until 930. Yes, you can come over to my house. And it is okay to say no now. I don't feel guilty about that. There are some things I'm still working on with work and working with all the men and that emotional stability piece, but it's been absolutely life-changing to not have that guilt to carry around with you. And to realize who those people are that just wanna suck your energy out and, and bring you down, whether it be jealousy or whatever they have going on in their life, they want it to bleed out onto you and you just have to build those walls and push back. And doing that has allowed me, number one, to be happier. Number two, I got a lot more emotional intelligence, so I don't react to some of the things they're talking about. I could go on and on about how life-changing it's been to just distance yourself and take time for yourself. Yeah, those people too. You know, if I'm talking to somebody and she told me she's just gonna take a nap, I'd be like, okay, good. You know, and almost women, the, the healthy woman wants to help other healthy women, you know, if we can or, or make it easier on them. We wanna help, we just wanna help. That's kind of just our nature and nurturing. So to get mad at another fellow mother that just says she wants to nap, like, I would almost want to protect your car like all right if anybody comes up i'll tell them to fuck off kind yeah. of thing instead of oh what the who did the fuck does she think she is what does that mean like if they got a problem with you taking care of yourself they are not for you 100 percent. and then the other thing i learned was i would spend hours of my week sitting at practices my son would be out on the baseball field and i would sit there and watch and now i drop him off i don't look back i go straight to the gym i get my workout in i'm energized i'm refreshed i pick him up and i'm this happy mom that's ready to spend time with my kids like and the moms are are you going to practice tonight nope i'm not i'm gonna go take a hot bath or i'm going to get a massage see you later damn oh so what'd you do the like mexican restaurants and when you went out to eat like how did you change the way you ordered food yes i did and i set rules for myself um as far as when i would say yes to go to dinner but in the past i would sit there and munch on chips and cheese dip and get everything coated in cheese and i can still go and order grilled chicken and a side of vegetables or there's several restaurants around here that will do like broccoli and cauliflower and peppers and grilled chicken and you just ask them to cook it differently or not to cook it in oil and I've been able to maintain any social life that I want and then the skinny margaritas with a little bit of soda water and some um, tequila and a little bit of lime juice so I still have my margaritas as well. Oh god that sounds good. What do you what do you get when you go to a Mexican restaurant to eat? 
usually grilled chicken. Occasionally, if I'm gonna spoil myself, I'll have some a carne asada, but usually some type of grilled chicken and some side of veggies. Okay, so you'll just get the chicken veggies and then your carb will be like the margarita? Yes, or occasionally I'll do a little bit of rice or a little bit of beans. Um, that's rare. If I, don't, if I have not met my carbs for the day, I'll do a little bit of rice or a little bit of beans. Got it. Okay, I like that. And then what about family? Like uh, when you went to travel, you know, there was some things like mother-in-law or, and mom, and there was a lot of toxic family enmeshment. Not that they meant to do it, but it was weighing on you a lot. Like it created a lot of emotional stress. So how did that end up panning out? Just learning to set my time limits, learning to speak up. There were a lot of things emotionally, like I had lost my dad several years ago. And I took it on 100% on myself to take care of my mom, provide for her emotionally, financially. And I realized that by she calls and was like, oh my gosh, my refrigerator's tore up. Okay, well, let's go get one. Let's go do this. But not only was I hurting her by not teaching her to be able to do those things for herself, but I would worry for three to four days straight that something was leaking in her house or that her refrigerator was messed up. And it was just taking a lot of toll on me emotionally. And there are days I would sit and just cry and cry and cry because my mom is four hours away and I'm not there to do those things for her. And I don't think she was necessarily doing it intentionally. She was a stay at home mom my entire life. And she was used to my dad taking care of all the administrative type stuff that you have to do around your house. And so for over 30 years, that's the only life that she knew. And she just called me to help her. Um, and I would just do it. You want your taxes done? Okay, bring me everything. I'll take care of it. And I had to teach her that she had to stand on her own or sometimes just not answer the phone or a text message. As much as I love her, I know that if she realized the impact it was having on me and the fact that I'm having to sign up for hot moms that talk about how emotionally charging it was that it would absolutely devastate her to know she was having that impact. But I never told her that. So being able to have that conversation and yeah. have that distance completely changed our relationship and it made her more independent. So you're saying you you didn't tell her any of this shit. You just kind of worked on it in yourself. So or I had never brought it up to her until I talked to you and you were like, okay, you're going to have to distance yourself. You're going to have to realize when someone's sucking the life out of you. And so I first just distanced myself, got myself together, got me emotionally stable to the point where I could have that conversation without getting mad. Because in the past, it would be like, mom, why did you go shopping today? You need to budget X, Y, and Z. Well, she's a grown ass woman and she's got to be able to do that for herself. So, but I could never talk to her about it without getting emotional or mad until we got down to the triggers of why I was emotional and why I was mad. And then at that point, I told her the impact it was having on me and she was absolutely devastated. I cried. That's not my intent. That's not what I wanted. Oh my gosh. And I, I feel like in the past six months, we've gotten so much closer because I was able to have that raw conversation of here's the impact you're having on me. And if it does not change, then we're going to have to limit, limit our time together. Good for you. And you know, that Alicia's case is so perfect. And unfortunately, a lot, some people listening, you may not have that type of mom, which Alicia's mom sounds like she's sane and she's a good hearted woman and aware of her shit. A lot of moms are very wounded. They're in a narcissistic state and they're going to have problems with that. And they're going to, they're going to project back onto you of why it's your fault and you're ungrateful and you're this and that. And they sacrifice so much. So it's really cool that she is, um, she's not like that. And she wanted to heal the shit instead of place blame on you or why you know you get where i'm going and i'm just sad that it took it took me signing up with you to realize that like if i would have had that conversation with her you know a year after my dad had passed away there's so much emotional stress that you could just feel it in my shoulders and in my back and the tightness and the anxiety i never had that in my life and when it started happening i couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and just that small conversation lifted all that weight and it's it's I feel lighter good well that's what I told a girl the other day I said here's what's going on as a child because our kids 
soak up everything like you, you have no idea but anyway as a child we start carrying this big bag behind us which is our parents shit maybe some things we feel like we need to be responsible for maybe siblings we feel like need to be responsible for maybe whatever it is we carry along then we get to be an adult and it's like you're saying we're like fuck i'm feeling oh this way and what it is is we've been carrying it for so long and finally you can you can release it and like oh my god here it's yours it wasn't even mine it feels so good so that's cool i want to get into this now totally different subject cankles that was your problem area right yes so from how the are we looking with legs now so much better i'm starting to see definition and like i've said a million times i've tried everything from the time i was in seventh grade people and like the older girls would laugh make fun of my cankles or say something about my big butt or i, I was always flat chested big butt <laughs> thick thighs and when i say thick i've never been over a size three or four so don't get me wrong, but I was proportioned differently at a young age. And so I always had this mental block in my head where I, I'm never gonna be able to do anything about it. It's just the way I was born. I can't change it no matter what I do. I felt hopeless and I was so self-conscious. I can remember um, one of the first videos, I video myself working, working out and I wore these shorts that were comfortable to work out in and I sent the video to you for critique and it's like I'm never gonna wear these shorts again this is so freaking embarrassing I can't believe I'm even send, sending this to you and you talk to some of my friends who are bigger girls and they almost make fun of me for feeling that way about myself like Alicia you're size three like I, what what do you have to feel bad about but it's it was instilled in me from the time I was so young by the older high school girl saying stuff about it that I just carried it around with me self-consciously my entire life. Yeah, and that's what gets me so, um, I get angry kind of because women will do that. You know, fat women will say this to skinny girls or anybody, it's always like a Olympics game of who had it worse. People don't realize that no matter what, how pretty you are, how skinny you may seem, we all experience shame and insecurity like we're all humans we're all going to feel it so for you to say that i shouldn't feel that way and just just sleep under the rug you're now you're telling you're not validating my pain here and you're telling me that it doesn't matter okay and i know that may not be their intention but it is what it is it's like when let's say they come to us and say you know i just i'm struggling i'm 50 pounds overweight and us going oh my god come on what this girl's 80 pounds overweight. Dear, you ain't got it that bad. We wouldn't fucking say that to them. Yeah. But just because we are, yeah. you know, small-ish, uh, it almost gives them a free pass to, to, to do that. And so it's just not okay. And maybe me saying this is them listening and going, oh, noted. But yeah, I'm glad that, that you worked through that. So, and cankles, by the way, I mean, you can get lipo on that because it is a fat storage area. And a lot of women hold fat in their lower bodies. But with Alicia, we worked on our hormones. What was it that was so low? Was it testosterone? Or tell us, I guess, where your panels were and then where you're at now. My adrenals were extremely low. Um, my thyroid was low. And I had IGF was very low. And testosterone was in the low range. It wasn't bottomed out yet, but it was in the low range. So we um, started wow. some vitamins started a thyroid medication and some Samoralin. And I feel that I literally feel better now than I did when I was 25. Just my husband is on cloud nine about how much energy I have, how much nicer I am. I'm not triggered easily. And then my kids like that I, I want to go outside and play and I have the energy to do it. Like I said, in the past, I would come home absolutely drained. I was moody. I would have to cook dinner and then clean up after dinner and it was a chore and now I'm in there with the music cranked up dancing while I'm cooking dinner because I have so much energy literally life-changing I cannot say it enough about how good I feel that's awesome and people are gonna be like what's some more than what's this and here's the deal like you can go to your hormones and stuff and go to these doctors that you can't go to regular doctors we have special resources in hot moms in the in the coaching program that we we teach you how to talk to them we teach you how to do things through the hot moms program but um, for those of you that are thinking, okay, I just go to the doctor and this and that, I mean, you can go and Google your way into it and just see what it is. I'm not going to get into it here. So what kind of money blocks did you have men like mentally money blocks? And then maybe, or did you have any financial success? Yes, I did get a promotion. I had moved through our company rather fast. And then I decided to go through one of our licensing training programs. And that program was a two year long training program. And then I was a developmental position. And so I went through the training program, got finished with the training program and did a couple years in this job. But by the time I did that, 
all the company leaders were gone. So I was kind of overwhelmed, a little um, self-conscious and thinking, how am I going to be able to build a rapport with the new company leaders who I've known and grew with? They promoted me through the organization and now I'm starting at ground zero. No one knows if they can trust me. I mean, they can look back at my performance reviews and see that they were well, but literally starting at ground zero, which was another energy drainer. So you go to work and I felt like I was fighting twice as hard. Not only am I one of the only females in a predominantly male organization, but everybody's new. So I felt like I had to do double time and overtime and the confidence was just going down the drain where I had the confidence before I just it was not there so had several talks with you as we dealt with each piece the family the workout piece which we still need to talk about the food the hormones every time I would check a box off I can feel my confidence I can feel myself sitting up straighter walking straighter and started manifesting I, I need to be here I deserve to be here Today's gonna be a good day. I can remember one day I came home from work and I texted you about what an awful day it was. And you were like, no, 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 no. You learned X, Y, Z today. And I'm like, you're right. So I turned what I did wrong into what I learned and my confidence just grew. And I started taking every situation that way. And it wasn't long into the program where I did get a promotion both annually and my bonus for the year was promoted and now I'm back in the management ranks. I'm getting more face time with all the corporate employees. So um, the growth opportunities will be endless now while I'm in this new role. That's badass. I love that we were talking last night about successful people and you, you get to a point where you don't even see failure. You see it as a, uh, it's part of fucking life because it's just another day. Like you, it's, it's a, like you say, it's a learning thing and here's how I'm gonna choose to show up moving forward and I'm deciding how it's gonna work out for me moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and not um, thinking okay. of it as a mistake, which I would dwell on. I don't think of those as mistakes anymore. I'm like, this, look what I learned today. Well, you said, uh, I think it would come from your dad, right? Like, it's almost how you receive love from your dad. It was a good job. It was about accomplishing, right? You were driven. You were driven because that's how you and your dad kind of the relationship was, right? Yes, he was so proud of me. And it, I would get good grades and he would praise it. I would make a basketball team and it was always praise and drive and don't ever have to depend on anyone if you are the only person standing be able to hold your own in any given situation and then each time i would accomplish something of that or a goal i would get the praise from my dad and when, at his funeral people would come in do you have any idea how proud he was of you yes i do because he told me so when i lost that and i lost my dad not having that I still had the drive and that's how I was raised and I'm a perfectionist because of it, which is another story in itself. But not having that was hard to overcome, not having that praise and push behind you that you're used to having your entire life. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, when she would fail, that's why it was so detrimental. It would just knock her down because that meant you know no approval no love so we worked through some of that she um actually grieved a little bit more i think you know from his passing that was cool you learning how to do that what's your goals moving forward my goals moving forward are to continue the eating healthy like i know how to count macros now i had no idea what a macro was before i'm to the point now like there are always days when i need to weigh things to keep it in check but as you grow and learn i don't have to take a scale with me everywhere i know what a healthy choice is when i go out to dinner or when i'm at home i know what i can buy from the grocery store to maintain this lifestyle that i've created and it's truly been that it's a lifestyle i can walk into a gym in any town any town now walk up straight posture confidence walk into almost any machine and be able to use it and it's not about how i look it's how it makes me feel and the energy it gives me by continuing it so i will not be giving up this lifestyle um as a matter of fact, I was scared they were going to shut everything down from COVID again. And I went out and bought all the workout equipment I would need to add to my van so that I would have it at my home. So being able to keep up with that and talk about it is huge for me. And then the emotional piece. Like last night, my boss said something that just crushed me. And I felt the tears welling up in my eyes. I felt the knot in my throat. Put my hand on my heart. I took a deep breath. I felt it. And I'm like, okay, what what am I going to do differently? What can I learn from this? I'm not going to react. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm not going to react. And just being able to take that forward and not give people the reaction they're looking for is huge. 
Yeah, man. Alchemy. Using that shit, turning it into gold. I love it. How did you sabotage yourself earlier? You know, the programs that didn't work. I guess, what were the piece you feel like that was just missing that Hot Moms filled the gap? Hot Moms was all inclusive. So before, I think I would just deal with one piece or the other. Like I would do the workout, but I didn't really know what my body needed for the diet as far as vitamins go. So you can work out all day long, but if you're not dealing with the root of why you're feeling the way you are or adjusting the vitamins that you need, the hormones that you need, the food that your body needs, you can do 60 miles on a treadmill and you're not going to get to where you want to go. So that was the life changer for me was dealing with all three pieces, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual, huge. Earlier, you would start on the programs. What would come in the way, I guess? What would get in the way? So I would do, let's say insanity. I probably got two months into insanity and then I would come home from work one day and I would be tired. That's oh, I'm so okay. tired. I don't even have the energy to do it. Got it. Got it. And so we came in and found out here's why you're tired and here's why you don't need to be doing that type of workout. Yes. And the biggest plus of got everything it. was absolutely zero cardio. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes. Well, cool. I think I've asked everything somebody would want to know, maybe, except there is one piece because you may be looking at her still and she's this little hot cheerleader, you know, doesn't look her age and all this, but she would you say you got bullied or emotionally abused growing up how the other girls treated you i would say more emotionally abused um especially from the people my age and a little bit older i was like the tallest person in my class in like fifth and sixth grade i grew fast i developed my booty really fast um like first day seventh grade i'm from a small town so we had like kindergarten through 12th grade all in the same area and i can remember walking into the um auditorium on day one of seventh grade and a senior slapping me on my butt which I was fully developed with my my butt by that time um but people would say stuff I would be out there cheering and somebody's boyfriend would look at me and you could hear the girls whispering or talking about me or making up something and even now as an adult when I get a leadership position you can hear the men whispering oh I know why she got promoted I wonder whose desk she's been under well bitch let me just tell you how I got promoted I work my butt off I've got all the classes here are my credentials this is why I'm qualified and it's driven me to do more professionally but it hurt me emotionally never dealing with anything like absolutely terrified to walk into a gym because I was so self-conscious about what people were going to say or how they were going to look at me or just those eyes on me made me so uncomfortable because of what I had dealt with in high school. And I, I didn't realize it until you started asking the why. Okay, but why? And then we finally got to when's the first time you ever felt that way. And that's where even even still, you know, people, I could just see a miserable old hag sitting there going, oh, look, I'm so beautiful. Help. No, what I'm saying is human beings we have the same emotions we all feel not good enough we feel the same type of betrayal hurt sadness happy excited like it's an emotion and we all feel it doesn't matter what we look like and that's that's the biggest thing is people would never think that about you probably that you felt so alone insecure all those things and you had to overcome that you had to overcome it you had to do life anyway feeling like that yes and it's still a constant battle but now i know how to deal with it or not react to it to now that's the biggest change is I don't react to it. Okay, talk all you want, watch this, hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> yeah, because you know that how they, what they're saying is more of a reflection of how they feel about themselves and it's sad, you know? And yeah, you just can't listen to it. So yeah, I love that. Well, cool. Is there anything else you think they need to hear? Maybe something that you wish you would have heard back in the day? I wish I would have done this sooner. Um, as soon as I started feeling the tiredness the self-doubt. I wish I would have reached out sooner. I did follow you for some time before I ever, I just thought my legs will never look like hers. Like she is absolutely perfect in every way. I'm sure she's done something great, but it, it won't happen for me. But being with the program as long as I have now and seeing the community of women and the different body types and the struggles that we all have and seeing those transformations physically and emotionally, it's it's absolutely amazing. That can be you. You can do it. Um, don't be afraid to invest in yourself because I wish I would have invested in myself sooner. If someone would have told me I needed this educational class to go farther in my job, I would have I would have never hesitated. Yes, sign me up for this class. Let me go to this college. 
but do it for you. Do it for how you want to look at yourself in the mirror and how you want to feel each day. Don't wait. Think of it as an investment and not blowing money on yourself because I promise if you listen to Casey and you're willing to do the work, it will change your life. Yeah, holla, holla. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows, okay? It's not toxic positivity. We probably have had more hard days than the good ones, right? And, yes. and that's the thing is, definitely. It's, it's, when she says doing the work, she means um, not waking up at 5 a.m. and doing cardio. She means on days you feel like you feel resistant, you feel self-doubt, sad, uh, confused, frustrated, pissed off. That's when you reach out. That's when you raise your hand. That's when you seek answers because that's how you're going to get to where you want to go. It's not just, oh my God, this feels good. High five girls. No, 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 no. It's a lot of shame work. We got to work on guilt. We got to work on fucking the shit that makes you, that you're avoiding. Literally. It's what we all, nobody wants to feel those feelings again. And sometimes we got to bring them up to shoo them out and get what you want. That's what I tell my kids when they come home from practice frustrated is look at, I'm an Alabama fan, born and raised in Alabama, but I I guarantee you that Nick Saban doesn't go into practice with sunshine and rainbows every day. Those kids come in there to work and he gives them critique and pushes. And that was one thing I valued about you most was that you would say, why are you using 10 pounds? You should be using 20. You pushed me and you critiqued (laughs) me and you told me what I was doing wrong. And that's what I needed. But if you think you're going to come into the program and it's all going to be handed to you on a silver platter, you're wrong. It's like with any course class, there are tests you have to take. Similar scenario here. You've got to be willing to do the work. And you may hate your teacher some days. I may may piss you off real good, but that's just something you got to look into. Yeah. And I'm not going to fix you. Like there's nothing wrong with you. People come in, they're like, I just want Casey to fix me. You, you fix yourself. I will, I'll show you like where you're fucking up and some, some moves to make, but you really have to do the work. And that's what Alicia was just so good at. Um, she would just do the fucking work. She, she would say, Hey, this ain't fun or damn, this feels this way, but I could count on her to, to take the bath, to journal, to do it anyway. So that's, that's good. That's good shit. I appreciate you in your time. Thank you, Alicia. You're very welcome. Thank you.